I'm Greg Waugh. I'm the president of SafeSpear LLC. We market a safe system, a system to uh, harvest lionfish in as safe a manner as is possible. We're very, very excited about the response. We had a full house here. We had uh, some folks fixing sushi and frying the fish outside. We had lots of questions. Uh, there's a lot of interest. I think people were very interested to find out about the venom and that once you remove the spines, that takes care of the venom and there's nothing in the flesh that uh, prevents you from eating it. I worked with someone who helped us with some of our early uh, bag designs in Charleston. He had a friend who came down to the Bahamas and got stuck in his uh, thumb and up to a year later he was still dealing with issues. So it is very serious. After you remove the spines, how long do they remain dangerous? Some work is showing that they, some people have said that they lose their toxicity if you freeze them after they've been on ice for a while. They're doing research now to determine how long that neurotoxin lasts, and the answers aren't in yet. So my advice is to clip the spines off, even if you've had them on ice all day, clip them off and dispose of the spines just to be safe. I don't want to sound like an alarmist, and, and it's not going to put us at any competitive disadvantage because all the Caribbean has lionfish. But sure, you have a nice tourist beach, but just out you've got thalassia grass. They've been found in, in turtle grass. You've got rock walls or, or, or uh, rocks in the water at each end of the beach. They're around that habitat. So uh, we, we need to encourage as much harvesting as possible. And again, if you're harvesting them just using pole spear and free diving, you can go out and do that now, and we need to. Fishermen are very efficient. If you look at all the regulations we have now that are required to try and limit fishermen, if we can target fishermen and create a market for this, it will give, give more jobs and it will help control lionfish. Now that takes care of the shallow water. These things have been found down to 500 feet. So there's gonna have to be more work. There's some work ongoing looking at fishing traps in a certain way with certain types of bait to try and make it more efficient for harvesting lionfish. So there's a lot more that, that can be done and needs to be done. But we can start in the shallow waters where we can, we, we can dive and we can put a hurting on these fish and we need to or we're going to start to lose more and more of our resources. These are the gloves that, that we recommend using. We've looked at a lot of gloves. These uh, are made by Hex Armor. They're needle resistant so that the front gives you lots of, of protection. You have to be careful on the back because the back is unprotected but this gives you some flexibility to be able to move the fish, move your hands around. And we've got a gripper that allows you to hold a fish. We've got clippers that allow you to clip the, the fins off. And that's the part that I want to show you. It's easy just to slide the, the gripper into the lip. And again, you're holding the fish a safe distance away from you. And you've got clippers, and these are the spines, the dorsal spines that are poisonous, the ventral spines, and the anal spines. But it's very easy to clip them off. That's the side, and you just come up from the bottom. and you clip all the dorsal spines off, the ventral spines you want to get off, and these pectoral spines, the ones on the side, are the ones that don't have the poisonous spines, but I just recommend cutting them off. That way you're safe, you know they're all off. And here's the anal spines. So once you do that, all the spines have been removed and it's, a, it's safe to consume. You need to be careful when you're doing this. And again, if you notice, the gloves do give you protection along the front of your hand, but again, you have to be careful. 
So once you have the, the spines off, the scales are very small. They come off very easily. You can either scale them and pan fry them. It makes a nice plate presentation. Or the ones that are bigger, you can knock the fillet off. Just fillet them like a regular fish and knock the skin off. And the kit does come with a, a, a knife and as we said, the, uh, the safety kit and information. Now this is the pole spear itself. It comes in two sections. This is solid aluminum and this one is hollow. Makes it easier for traveling. You just screw the two sections together and it operates basically like a standard pole spear. You take your thumb and put your thumb through the loop and you just hold up along the pole spear. And again, this is just like a normal pole spear. Put it within a couple of inches of the fish and just let it go. And then it spears the lionfish and you've got three stainless steel flexible tips, it's called a paralyzer tip. And as it enters the fish, these open up and impale the fish and hold it on the end so that then it's a safe distance from you. Now the tip is the same. You can get this on a, on a standard spear, on a pole spear. Here, here's the part that we think makes it very safe. It's how you eject it. So you've got the fish on, on the end of your, your, your pole spear. And if you're diving in deep water, you can use this kit. And again, the top folds down to keep the, the, as much water in the bag as is possible. We're going to have a handle on the side here so that you can uh, hold it a little farther away from the top. So you've got your lionfish on the end. You place them inside the bag. And this trap door throat opens and you've got the fish inside the bag and then you use the ejection system and just rotate it and push the fish off and the fish stays in the bag and then you can close the bag and it reduces the water flow. For up on the surface we've got a floating bucket float system that you can clip to your belt or pull along behind you so in that case you'd have a bucket that you hold the fish over the bucket rotate this and afterwards I've got this spear and we've got some in the back I'll be glad to let you all take a closer look at it but you rotate this plunger and then just push the lionfish off the end so it, again it's all hinged on safety to keep your hands safely away uh, from the lionfish there's no more bone in in lionfish than a normal fish uh, once you fillet it it's got a little bit of uh, bones around the rib cage uh, but Bahamians are uh, well uh, adapted to eating fish with bones. That's a very popular way to eat pan fish here. The way this should work is the fishermen themselves need to remove the spines. Uh, I think it has tremendous plate appeal as a whole fish on the plate. The larger ones you get up around 18 inches and you can knock a good fillet off of a fish that size. A lot of the smaller ones would be much better served whole on the plate. So I think the commercial fishermen are going to need to learn to remove those spines safely and then provide the market with a safe product that they can just consume. I've worked 30 years in fisheries management trying to limit fishermen from fishing. Uh, this is a way to encourage them and I know they can go out and target these fish. We've got to get some restaurants to start serving them so that then they're buying them. Uh, they're excellent eating, so I think it can be a very viable fishery uh, for our fishermen, particularly now during the closed season for crawfish. It gives them something to do during that closed season. This is basic. it's a pole spear. The, the, the trigger mechanism, <coughs> excuse me, is a pole spear. It's, it's not different from a pole spear. There's nothing, you don't cock this and hold this. So this would fall under the definitions of a pole spear and they haven't said anything different to us. If you get this high abundance of lionfish, something's going to start eating them. That's the hope. And to me, the, the, the first predator in line is man. Man should be out there harvesting them and eating them. Uh, once our natural uh, populations of Nassau group and other species rebuild, they may be able to start consuming them. I think there's definitely a niche market. Um, 
you know, lionfish are an exotic species. Um, they are indigenous to the Pacific. Uh, a lot of people see them in fish tanks and what have you. And you know, given the opportunity to eat an exotic looking and poisonous fish, this may be something that tourists might be interested in doing as well as Bahamians. So I think if you can offer a fish that tastes good, which lionfish does, and we just had some here this evening, um, you can offer an exotic fish uh, at also at a premium price. I'm surprised that it's, uh, it's producing so fast. And according to Mr. Mr. War, um, we can be overrun with lionfish in short order. And we hope that uh, what do come out of this meeting is uh, we try to uh, depopulate the lionfish by having those uh, fish outs, fish fries. Uh, the meat, I've tried it and it's pretty good. The sushi, I'm not going to try. But uh, <laughs> yes, the fillet uh, lionfish tastes good. It's a regular fish and uh, it was nice to eat. If you cook it thoroughly, it's then you're dead. good. How is it, Angelica? Well, I was uh, swimming in the canals of Grand Bahama, Fortune Bay, for most of my growing up. And uh, in 2005, 2006, I was swimming along in 2006, and I uh, swam by and I saw an unusual fish that I knew from my scuba diving background. And I went immediately back home to the dock and went on the computer and looked in the book and saw that it was actually a lionfish. So I swam back and uh, my first thoughts were to contact UNEXO, which I did, and we tried to capture it, but it got away. So I went back the next day and I speared it. And after that, when I learned that they were such a dangerous, invasive fish, uh, everyone I've caught or seen since then, I've speared. And I've probably speared upwards between 100 and 150 of them, which uh, I haven't eaten any yet. But it is a challenge because they're a small fish and it helps me practice my aim. And uh, it is a very scary, invasive fish. As we've seen on the charts, uh, they follow the coastline and all the islands. But uh, they've also gone to Bermuda, 1,200 miles offshore in open ocean. So we're seeing that the lionfish is actually invading territories that are well offshore and not in any local region so they can't hop from island to island. We're very, very pleased to uh, see the level of response and interest. We're excited to continue to work with our uh, sponsors, our, 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 uh, the affiliates that we're working with, and we're anxious to continue to work with the government and hopefully they'll find a way to allow these items to be brought in duty free. But our working relationship with the government has been excellent, they're very supportive, and we look forward to continuing that.